The next speaker in this session is Jonas Zhukauskas, an architect based in Vilnius. Through research, curatorial and architectural projects, he aims to create new relations between societies and their environment, past and future that being shaped by two very different linear Soviet and Visomatic European long-term spatial models. Exploring the material, infrastructural and cultural connections that have persevered despite the political borders and conflict lines that have been laid throughout the Baltic region, Jonas seeks to re-articulate artic architecture in a wider ecology of spatial practices. Jonas received his diploma from Architectural Association School of Architecture in London, previously studied at London Metropolitan University and Vilnius Academy of Fine Arts. In 2013, he co-curated Dissidents Through Architecture Conversations series at the National Gallery of Art in Vilnius. In 2014, he worked for MBRDV Architects in Rotterdam. He also co-curated the Baltic Pavilion, the joint exhibition that represented Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania at the 12th Architecture Biennale in Venice. In 2018, together with Jürgen Daubereite, he curated Baltic Material Assemblies the show and pub public events spanning AA Gallery and RIBA practice space in London. Cases of Inertness is the title of Jonas talk. Please welcome. Uh, hi everyone. Uh, thanks for uh, this introduction and great to see you all here. I'll, uh, I'll uh, follow Indrik's example, no? So we said like new, <laughs> new style of uh, sitting down here. So, um, so let, let me start um, with, uh, with this gray map uh, of everything uh, inscribed into Baltic space. It's turned on the side uh, and the north is where I am. <laughs> uh, the Baltics were recently described as energy island in relation to the infrastructure underpinning the European Union. The three states have been transforming their linear infrastructural dependencies on Russian energy resources that were conceived in the years of Soviet central planning programs. I will talk about overlay of two spatial logics that shape the Baltic states and wider space. First, the, what I suggest to name as inert, the linear arrangement of infrastructural actors formed uh, by Soviet central planning that still persists today. And the second, EU space, where infrastructural actors will be interconnected in rhizomatic manner of the free market, hopefully in the near future. So the situation was formed before the fall of the Berlin Wall by conflicting regimes from previous century who dispatched stratigraphic layer of the Anthropocene to shape the Earth's crust and distort each other's futurity. They are no longer with us and the seemingly ongoing conflict is a series of inert material processes and infrastructures territorializing European space in many ways. These may be understood as hyperobjects. Hyperobject is a term defined by philosopher Timothy Morton as referring, uh, quote, as referring to things that are massively distributed in time and space relative to humans, uh, unquote. So these are the things we cannot grasp uh, with one, uh, one look, they are unrepresentable. For Timothy, uh, for example, agriculture is a hyperobject, which Sometimes you see it, uh, we, we consume it, but then to, to understand it as a whole, uh, you need uh, kind of separate uh, sets of op optics. So, the represent so this, rep this presentation is an assemblage of fragments outlining the object-oriented architecture of the long term in the hands of the powerful that is intervening into what Keller Esteling describes as infrastructure matrix the concealed field that operates beyond human definitions. To explain further, let's unfold the stratigraphy by going back in time a little bit. During the process of Soviet industrialization, planning institutions regulated processes for the transformation of physical space through planning directives. 
sets of normatives implemented through a hierarchical structure of planning institute and research establishments, all governed from one building in Moscow that, that was Gosplan. The general organizational structure of Gosplan, the planning committee, descended directives onto local authorities. Notions of scale were deployed to relate the administrative hierarchy and the directives went down through a set of institutions regulating the whole Soviet Union. Descending into a scale of one republic and further, still, uh, further, still into administrative nodes. Cybernetic methods in the hands of Communist Party were used to deploy and control built space, territorializing Soviet empire based on linear center periphery principle. At Hold on, hold on. Okay, well, let's hold on, uh, get on with it. Um, at the hunting lodge in Belarus, Belovezhskaya Pusha Forest, a secret meeting was held on 8th of December 1991 by the leaders of only three Soviet republics. The Baltics were out and the others were uh, not, uh, not there. Uh, they were Russia, Ukraine, and Belarus. Signing Bill of Veja Accords, they simply proclaimed already the obvious that the Soviet Union ceased to exist and they established the Commonwealth of Independent States that will now take its place. Nonviolent dissolution of the Soviet Union was possible only through realization that the former members are still uh, interconnected, territorialized by economic and infrastructural ties without contradicting national independence aspirations of their societies. So you keep the links, but then you just name it differently. Uh, in, the same, uh, in the same year, uh, Bruno Latour published We Have Never Been Modern, turning from modernist opposition between humans and objects towards an understanding of the interrelatedness of things and further proposing to see these connections or hybrids as non-human actors by proposing a symmetry between the fall of the Berlin Wall and the end of limitless nature, he looked beyond the end of history, worldview, and the authority, uh, euphoria of the West winning the Cold War. In a televised speech that separated the abundance of land, oil, gas, and other natural resources, and the intellect and talent of people from the suffocating bureaucratic system, which was serving an ideology, an arms race that put society at the limits of the possible, the president of the USSR, Mikhail Gorbachev, announced his resignation uh, a bit later in 1991. The idea of nonviolent dissolution of major nuclear power and a gentle phasing out to ensure smooth transfer of power was nested in a concept of self-definition for the newly independent 15 states that still shared economic interests and the circulation of resources and the ideology seemed to be discarded. Here Gorbachev is in Vilnius, uh, desperate uh, before his speech on the television in 1989, trying to convince Lithuania not to leave the Soviet Union. And to illustrate the change uh, what, what endured, uh, here he, he writes uh, in a limousine alongside the Berlin Wall uh, in Louis Vuitton ad uh, in 2007. Louis Vuitton uh, persuaded Mikhail Gorbachev to participate in the ad campaign by making a donation to the environmental charity which was run by him, Green Cross International. Gas and, oh, that was the Belovezhe uh, Accords meeting. Uh, this Soviet chic. Gas and oil fields in Siberia discovered in the 60s and already in mid 70s extraction operations and pipelines were developed for fossil fuel supply to reach Italy and France. Long lines crossed the map of Europe. The resources were large, capacity and complexity of the circulation networks grew ever since. Coinciding with Iranian revolution at the time, Soviets, supply, uh, Soviets were supplied with Western loans and steel pipes, used the opportunity to develop the gas networks further. 
US sanctions imposed on the Soviet Union in 82 did not prevent development of around 20,000 kilometers of pipeline system developed to transport gas from Yamburg, Uringoy, Medvezhia, and other gas fields to Western Europe. The infrastructure increased this, uh, the infrastructure increased uh, Europe's dependency on the main energy supplier, the Soviet Union. So to quote uh, one researcher, the question is not whether Russia has sufficient oil and gas reserves, but rather when and at what cost they will be developed and which transport routes uh, will be taken. Branded as secure gas, gas supply for Europe, Nord Stream 1 and 2 are two natural gas pipelines laid at the bottom of the Baltic Sea, directly connecting Russia and Germany. The project marks betrayal of the Eastern European countries and failure of European energy policy. Germany, France, and Britain treat, treat uh, Nord Stream 2 project as a business venture, but it is widely discussed to have no viable economic rationale. It's a discussion here. Yeah? In combination, Nord Stream and Turk Stream may provide uh, uh, 118 billion cubic meters per year capacity that may be used to swap gas flow away from Progress Pipeline and Urengoy Center Pipeline running via Ukraine and Belarus. It is feared to be instrumental in case Russia decides to accelerate the ongoing military intervention in Ukraine or apply political pressure on the Baltic states and countries in Central Europe. These are the gas fields in Novi Urengoy in Western Siberia. Here gas that is supplied to European market is extracted. That's the uh, multi-year spatial uh, analysis uh, map, the method uh, developed by territorial agency that I'm applying to, to this area here. Uh, Landsat data sets from uh, United States Geological Survey years 2013, 16, and 19 are represented by red, green, and blue spectral channels in this image. For example, red color highlights hard surfaces from year 2013 that are no longer used in later editions and likely to be overgrown by vegetation. Um, later intervention in 2016 are highlighted by green color and latest additions in 2019 are highlighted in blue color. So you see consequential uh, expansion of uh, gas extracting operations. Nord Stream site in Portovoya Bay in Russia, next to uh, former uh, uh, Finnish town Vipuri, now uh, Russian Viborg, where the gas pipeline, pipeline descends to the bottom of the Baltic Sea. After spanning uh, 1,224 kilometers on the sea floor, Nord Stream surfaces in Lubmin, Germany. And that is uh, Operation Room at Dispatch Department, visited by members of Russian State Duma. No? It's a bit like sci-fi uh, kind of moment here. Soviet nomenclatura and secret services attached to the fossil fuel networks, I would claim that it kind of carries that relationship, uh, that were at the heart of the Soviet system prevailed in a, in a hybrid way. During short window for change in the 90s, shock therapy to kickstart market economy, the, fu the fossil fuel industries were instrumental in transforming the state. Boris Yeltsin, that's early 90s, administration privatized the energy resources sector at the same time retaining it in Russian hands. The plan was to establish new and super wealthy social class, the oligarchs, were supposed to initiate new power structure to counterbalance the old Communist Party nomenclature and KGB networks and kick off the free market economy. So that's a strong, uh, strong uh, alternative. But it uh, backfired with Putin coming to power and drastically nationalizing the privatized energy assets, transferring them to state-controlled companies. Oligarchs emigrated or were jailed. Consequently, geopolitics returned to Europe as networks of former KGB officers took hold of the energy assets to reinstate Russia's lost influence. For their artwork, the Druzhba project started in 2003. Lithuanian artists Mamedo and Gediminas Urbanas 
reflected on the world's longest oil pipeline constructed during 60s and enhanced in 70s. It spans around uh, 4,000 kilometers from oil uh, extraction sites in Siberia through Belarus and Ukraine and onwards to Central and Western Europe. Uh, analyzing documentary film reels and the symbolic gestures of friendship between connected nations embodied in fossil fuel pipelines, the artists uh, discovered um, uh, uh, the ways in which infrastructure relates to, or rather carries with it culture, shapes spatial practices and the relationship societies have with the environment. Artists' uh, psychogeographic journey along the section of Druzhba recorded in the form of a diary encounter, encountered hybrids relating images, subcultures, esoteric practices, and symbolic rituals, manifestations of submission to the liquid black matter. To quote them, spanning the gamut of human enterprise from an ensemble of performance or spreadable cheeses uh, to a series of sanatoriums or plastic figures to sports clubs, cinema theaters, or automobiles. When one follows the Druzhba, one finds it oneself in Druzhba, at Druzhba, meeting Druzhba. So the gas and oil pipelines that shape European map the collapse of the Soviet regime coincided with an understanding of the environment as a set of relationships outside an ideology. No wonder the independence movements in the Baltics were initially exercised around environmental issues. In Estonia, the independence movement was galvanized by env environmental protests against plans, against plans for mining Europe's largest phosphorite resource to produce fertilizers and projected influx of workforce from other Soviet republics. The news broke uh, following perestroika reforms, which introduced press freedom at the end of the 80s. Leading, leading to demonstrations and marches, the protests were titled the Phosphorite Wars. National sentiment was expressed in a cartoon by Prit Palm uh, showing a peasant in a field, uh, uh, showing a peasant in a field, <laughs> yeah, so he shows the peasant in a field shouting just shit and throwing a lump of manure on a sh in the shape of Estonia. Realizing the relationship Estonian society has with its mineral resources, in 1991, Yuri Okas, uh, in his architectural project for Estonian Pavilion at Expo 92, Seville, competition proposed to represent the nation through geological strata. He wrote, um, to quote him, during construction and destruction, each structure or building enters a phase where it is difficult to define whether it is in a process of being built or torn down. The same can be said about the society." Unquote. The project um, detailed the material assembly representing the nation that is ongoing radical transformation. Junipers, hay, limestone, granite, phosphorite, ore, oil shale, represented a geological sample from complex relationship society has with its environment. In Lithuania, Estonian environmental activists joined anti-nuclear movement aimed to stop Ignalina nuclear power plant. The protests were sparked by a Chernobyl disaster and focused against the development of Ignalina nuclear power plant. Its first reactor went online previously in 1983 and the second one in 1987, with the third never finished. Consequently, only in 2009, fulfilling the condition of Lithuania's accession to European Union, the nuclear power plant was finally shut down. As it did not have a containment shell over its RBMK-type reactors, identical to the one that failed the Chernobyl disaster. So you said you just cannot have this unsafe uh, equipment on, <laughs> on European Union soil. That's the reactor. The, 
In the Lina nuclear power plant, the commissioning is supported by all members of the European Union until 2038. This plant will be dismantled, nuclear waste separated and stored in adjacent radioactive storage facilities. But nuclear power plant decommissioning is open-ended uh, technological and social process that defies plans and projects and its architecture, and it is architecture of the long term, uh, is to be developed. That's no longer there being dismantled this year residue to be sorted, cut up, decontaminated. The commissioning of the Ignalina nuclear power plant resulted potential scenario of energy isolation. The Baltic states currently seek to diversify in electricity sources and secure their energy supply by reducing its dependency on IPS, UPS power system that is known as BREL, Belarus, Russia, Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania, ring by seeking to integrate into synchronous grid of continental Europe. Latest initiatives to build seabed cable connections to Scandinavia, North Balt, Estlink 1, Estlink 2, and interconnecting, interconnected to Poland, which is called Litpol Link, um, only partially addressed long term energy security issue. Failure to construct new nuclear power plant in Visaginas next to the decommissioned Ignalina nuclear power plant following negative outcome of 2012 referendum in Lithuania and dependency on Brel Ring created the positive conditions for Belarus to construct a new uh, nuclear power plant in Astravets that is close to Lithuanian border, its capital Vilnius. This is zoomed in photograph taken while flying in ho hot air balloon above Lithuanian capital Vilnius, 50 kilometers. No, this is a zoom in photograph. Yeah. It shows the construction site in close proximity. The project raised uh, environmental and safety concerns. The new plant built by Russian contractor Rosatom will start operating in next year, January. Uh, Estonia, okay, let's go back to Estonia, to this day, is burning a particular kind of fossil fuel that is oil shale. Supplied by the vast mining industry in North Estonia, the Narva power plants produce 70% of country's electricity supply. It varies, but it's a huge number. This makes the country largest pollutant per, per unit of gross domestic product in the world. That's the uh, to compare to other countries is per, um, per amount uh, uh, earned. Together with photographers David Brandorge and Jonathan Lofkin, we have visited the mining facilities in the North Estonia. So we go now like to the ground as if descending deeper and deeper into the stratigraphy uh, in a way it uh, represents the society and its relationship to its environment. Ines Weissman uh, wrote uh, about their photography project. Factories, industrial sites, and sublime scenes of enormous man-made mountains uh, are piled up. For Grand Orge and Lofkin, these do not represent the sites of past infrastructures unplugged from power. They are not taking us back into the future of the past, into a nostalgic that is wrongly remembered utopia. Rather, the cables and wires of the objects and infrastructures in their photographs are alive, still hot, still connected to the power circle, and still longing to be reinstated. Their gloomy vampirism only seems to hide an autism of animated matter. At Sirgala open cast mine, uh, we came across this excavator. No, it's a, it's, it's a lot of walking. No? We take pictures, we go to specific places, and we try to find these moments where the geopolitics and, and other secrets unfold uh, in, in, uh, in a kind of material way that we can grasp or take a picture, and we can frame with a, with a, um, with a photography camera. Uh, a 
at Sergola open cast oil shale mine, we came across this excavator that was constructed in 1984 in Donbass mining region in Ukraine. Russian speaking worker showed us his work place and invited to climb the excavator arm. Uh, from above, he pointed towards the horizon saying uh, that, that I what, this is what I was digging for 12 years. You know, so this, this, you reflect in a way like what you have done with your life in 12 years. And then in his cab, uh, where he spends most of his work hours, we saw this, uh, uh, that's his cab, we saw this magnet, uh, which is uh, saying, I see you, you are not working. Futurity of Europe is shaped by infrastructure space. In the wake of Crimea annexation in February, March 2014 by Russia and ongoing war in Ukraine, European Commission launched a response, Energy Union to provide affordable, more sustainable and secure energy by reducing EU's energy dependency. It sets the EU to go to carbon, to be carbon neutral by 2050. In the meantime, there is an urgent need for mutually reinforcing initiatives to deploy series of interconnections to bind fragmented, from the EU point of view, energy infrastructure networks. So from Russia point of view, it's all linear and it's working. Like if you think about Europe, you have to interconnect them. So these are maps from uh, a European Commission web map application detail the completed energy circulation lines and the projected projects to, for, to interconnect the existing ones. It is an attempt to dismantle linear supply-demand relationship, promoting the horizontal non-linear networking to diversify sources of energy. Such structure may become resilient to Russia's hybrid warfare that employs fossil fuel networks to tap in, tap into and shape the politics of European Union. The infrastructural dependency of the Baltic states to energy networks tied to Russia may translate to a ge geopolitical challenge if European Union will be weakened by its ongoing fragmentation. So a lot of work to be done, very low uh, resolution uh, images, in a way very abstract. So how are we going to make them real and tangible as the photographs we saw before? It's a kind of question how to bring them together. Thank you.